Welcome to the Rogue Academy. We've got some very exciting stuff for you today. We're going to be building our very own Bunraku puppet out of stuff you've got around the house. My name is Miles Tabor. I've been a member of the Rogue Artists Ensemble for 15 years. I'm a professional puppeteer and creator, and I'm really excited to show you what we're going to do today. Normally, when we teach this workshop, it's a newspaper and duct tape workshop, but um, some people probably have more newspaper than others. So we're going to go over a lot of other materials that you can use today. Cardboard is great, junk mail. Aluminum foil is another great one. Whatever tape you have around, if you have duct tape, that's great. <laughs> Masking tape uh, is a pretty good alternative. Scotch tape, uh, clear tape, is probably not going to be sticky enough for you. You're gonna want to use something a little bit heavier. Now you are going to need several different pieces to create your own Bunraku puppet. You'll need a head that goes at the top. You'll need a torso to go underneath. Um, uh, it's very helpful in the long run to have hips also, to have a pelvis underneath that torso. And then you're gonna need four sections for the arms and legs. You're gonna need a pair of upper arm sections. You're going to need a pair of lower arm sections. You're going to need a pair of upper leg sections. And a pair of lower leg sections. And then you're going to be joining all of these together with tape in a couple of different ways that I'll show you as we get to them. Now, if you want, you can also obviously create things like hands. And then, you know, you can add on other things. You can add on a hat. You can make a face. Uh, you can uh, give him shoulder pads. Like a military general. You can give him words. And it probably ain't on you. I mean, the point I'm trying to get across here is once you've got your puppet, you can do all kinds of things with that. He's your puppet after all. Do with him what you want. Ta-da! The bulkiest piece that we're gonna make is the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start crumpling up whichever pieces of paper I like. And I'm making the torso, like I said, which is the largest portion. And I'm crumpling up balls, then I'm crumpling up balls around those balls. We're getting close to big enough. A little more. And ideally, like you can see here, we want this torso to be a little bit elongated, a little bit triangular. Now it's all kind of loose in the back, so we're gonna tape that all together. Probably need a few strips of tape for this one. Here's one. Just getting all those loose ends relatively stuck down so that our little paper ball doesn't come unfurled. All right, now it's time for what is probably my favorite material to work with, and that's the good old aluminum foil. Um, I could build a whole puppet out of these and have a good time doing it, but it's also more expensive than a lot of these other materials. So we're just going to use it for the head. And then just going to crumple it. Now that's going to be pretty good size. Yeah, on top of that body. Uh, fortunately, the aluminum foil does a great job holding itself together, so there's nothing more we need to do today. 
going to tear off. This is just paper that came to my house in a box. Crumple this paper up into a little kind of triangular ball. It's about the right size to go with the ball we made earlier. Tear off some tape. There we go. All right. So we're going to use two sheets and uh, we're going to take these and just put them right up against each other, flush with each other, and decide how long we want this arm section to be. Uh, we could make this the upper section of an arm, which is going to be around about that long. Then all we're going to do is roll this guy up. I find it's easier to roll him up if I fold him in half first, just like that. And then roll it on up. All right, that's a fairly narrow piece, but we can let it loosen up a little bit before we tape it. And it'll be less dense, but also a little bulkier, so we can use it just like that. Just like that. Another great one is the uh, cardboard tube. Um, if you have used toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls around your house, this is a great time to use them. Um, this is one where the scissors are going to come in a little handier than the straight up tearing we were doing. You're going to choose the length of the, the portion you're going to cut. Let's say this is going to be the lower leg. So I'm going to cut it about this long. Just cut it off right here. a slit right down the middle like that. And what that lets us do then is we can roll it up tighter, like so. Get a nice, neat little cardboard tube. That'll be perfect. Uh, I recommend not using a full strip of the duct tape to secure it. Uh, I like to tear it off in half strips, like that width. And then you can just run that down the side of what you're doing here to help secure it together. Now, we don't have to have everything too neat and tidy. This is sort of a down and dirty project. Let me show you how you're gonna tear off a half strip of this duct tape here. Just gonna prevent it all from coming up. Peel away a half, or slightly less than a half strip, just like that, and tape that down the side to keep your little paper tube together just like so. Uh, you get the general idea of how to put these arm and leg pieces together, so I'm gonna zoom through assembling a few more so we're ready to go. Got a head all ready to go. Got a torso all ready to go. We've got a pelvis ready to go. The top of a leg made with aluminum foil. And another top of a leg made with a pizza box. I've got the top of an arm made with, uh, this is cardboard. I've got another top of an arm made with a uh, grocery bag. I've got a lower arm made from note paper. I've got another lower arm made from a toilet paper roll. I've got a lower leg made from another toilet paper roll. And our last lower leg, lower leg made from, uh, boy, another toilet paper roll. I really dug deep in the toilet paper rolls for this guy. We have all of our pieces here, and I'm gonna have to put them together with tape hinges. Mm -hmm. 
Those two types of joints are the hinge joint and the ball and socket joint. I'm going to show you how to do each of these, but first we have to determine which kind of joint each of these are. Now, your neck between your head and your torso, that can turn a lot of different ways. It can turn forward and backward, it can turn left and right, it can move all around for you. So that's going to be a ball and socket joint. Now in our bodies, obviously, it's more complicated than that. It's a whole bunch of joints. But for this, it's just going to be one ball and socket joint. Whereas, for an elbow between your forearm and your upper arm, that really only moves one way. It just bends this one way. Now you can reach different directions, but that's because your shoulder is turning. It's got one of those handy ball and socket joints. Now to start that hinge joint, we want to open it up just like it's going to be when it's all the way extended right here, like your arm is stretched out all the way. And we're going to take a piece of tape and we're going to lay it right across that. So that's your open arm right here and it bends like that. Uh, but we don't want that tape to come off with just that one piece. So we're going to bend the elbow as far as it bends. And we're going to take another piece and we're going to tape across the back of that elbow. So those two pieces of tape come together in the middle right here. And we've got our hinge joint. That's the kind of joint you have in your knees and elbows, just like that. Um, so you can see how the elbow and the shoulder work together. Now before you attach it, you want to make sure that that elbow is pointing forward, because that's as good a place to start as any. And then it's going to be a lot like the hinge joint, only we're going to leave a little more space. We're going to tape across just like that. See, it's very much like what we did before, only we're leaving that little gap in between there. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. Do another piece of tape underneath that runs up the arm across that piece of tape we just put down and onto the torso like that. So you've got two pieces of tape that are keeping everything together. They're covering each other's sticky sides. And what that allows it to do is not only does it get to bend like a hinge joint like that, but it also gets to move in all directions because of the flex we've got from that extra bit of tape here. So now that arm can do all the things that you would want an arm to do. For our pelvis, we've got another ball and socket joint. Tape here, we're going to leave some slack before we get to the bottom. It doesn't have to be as much slack. The pelvis doesn't need to be as flexible as that shoulder is. We're going to do another piece of tape coming from the back. They're meeting in the middle, covering each other's sticky spots. So now we've got a pelvis that can twist so we can bend at the waist. We've got another ball and socket joint for the head up here. We want that one to be nice and flexible so that he can look whatever direction he's got to look. Another piece of tape on the back there. Okay, so now he's got a neck and he can look whatever direction. And now it's important to remember that we're taping these knees in the reverse of the way the elbows went. So the way the elbows went forward, the knees are going to go backwards. So we've turned him over, so he's face down. We'll tape him the first part of the hinge on the back. Then we're going to flip him over. We're going to bend those knees all the way and tape the fronts of them. Just like that. To get our hinge. Now if you have something that's coming loose, uh, don't worry about it. You can see our aluminum foil isn't holding together right there. Fortunately, we've got lots of tape handy. If something starts to come loose from your paper, your foil, your cardboard, whatever you're using, just use more tape to secure it down. Then it'll stay much better and you will have a happier puppet to work with. Now we 
go. We got everything. We got a neck. We got a couple of arms with elbows. We got hips. And we got knees. We're ready to take this guy out for a test drive. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a puppet team with you, to have other people that you're going to puppeteer with, then here are the positions that you'll each take. Now, one person is going to use their left hand to hold the head. Now, you can use some tape if you want to put a handle on the back of the head. Just take two pieces of tape, put them together, and stick them onto the back there to give you something to grip with. I like to hold the head directly myself. And then you can look left, right, up, down, pay attention to what puppet's paying attention to. And then you're also in control of the right hand. Uh, you're going to reach, you're going to hold it down by your side, all of those different things. If you need to pick something up with the puppet, then you can hold its arm near the hand. That way when you reach, you'll also be able to pick something up. So that's the lead puppeteer, the secondary. secondary puppeteer, I'm going to have to let his head fall for a second, is holding the body and is taking the left arm. Now that person is in charge of keeping the puppet, uh, the puppet's weight steady, of moving the puppet along, of reaching and gesturing with the left arm, usually following what the right arm is doing. Now the third puppeteer has a very important job and this is going to look funny when I'm doing it by myself because the rest of the puppet is going to flop over, but that third puppeteer controls the legs. And the legs are very important because one of the big differences between a puppet and a person is that a person is carrying their own weight, whereas a puppet's weight is being carried for him. And so the legs are what let you know that that puppet has weight. If those legs float up off the ground, or if they sink down like this, then it looks like the puppet is a puppet. But if those feet stay rooted on the ground, if he moves solidly, then it looks like he's a puppet who has weight and is carrying his own weight. Now, if you have three people all working together, you have one person holding the head and the right arm, you have another person holding the body and the left arm, you have a third person moving the feet, then you can move all of those things together. And it takes a lot of communication and coordination, but it can make your puppet look very alive and very amazing. And that's it. We've created our very own Bunraku puppet out of stuff we've got around the household. And now it's uh, yours forever to uh, play with by yourself or with your friends. Uh, thank you for joining me here for the Rogue Academy. And until next time, Keep scheming and dreaming.